Hi, welcome to the Fresh Start teaching series with one of our founders, Pastor Joe Cordovano. This week's teaching is about God's promises in your life and how he's been faithful throughout every season. Pastor Joe will also talk about how God is for you and not against you. Stay tuned until the end of the class for some additional information you don't want to miss. Thanks again for tuning in. Here's Pastor Joe. All right, so tonight we're going to be talking about God's promises. So let me open up with a scripture, Deuteronomy 8.15. Do not forget that he led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with poisonous snakes and scorpions where it was hot and dry. He gave you water from a rock. He fed you with manna in the wilderness, a food unknown to your ancestors. He did this to humble you and test you for your own good. He did it so you would never think that it was on your own strength and energy that made you wealthy. All right, the first thing I want to make sure we understand is I'm not giving you all a history lesson tonight. I'm not a history teacher. I'm not giving you a history lesson. But I do want to talk about what God uh, does and will do for you in the seasons of your life. And, And, you know, Tonight we heard some, some praise reports about what God's been doing in, in, in some of our lives. <clears throat> and I think it's important that we understand what this scripture means. It's, it basically means we're, we're and, and we could talk about the Old Testament and Deuteronomies and, and these people. Let's talk about us. All right? Because really that's what this whole thing is about. Deuteronomy 8.15 is God's promises to that people but for us. <clears throat> and what I want to make sure we understand is, is that where we didn't see a way, he made a way. So now that we're all on the same page and you understand where I'm coming from, let me talk to you a minute. We've all been in the wilderness. Every one of us, we're going to continue to be in the wilderness. Hopefully not as, not as, uh, not as uh, I don't know if wilderness is a word, I guess not. Not as much in, in the wilderness as, as, as we have been, but, but we've all been there. Drugs, alcohol, all the addictions. That's the wilderness. And what we have to understand is, and what I want you to understand tonight, especially those of you that are kind of, on the fence is that that God provided a way for you in those hard places. And that's important because sometimes we forget about that. Sometimes when things, when God's blessing us and things are going well and, and you know, we're getting that paycheck and, and we're, we have our health and, and you know, we got a, we got a, a, a full belly and and, you know, warm showers and, and you know, comfortable beds and, and all that stuff. And the air conditioning is working. And we sometimes forget about those hard places and how God provided for us. And it's not that I want to sit here tonight and beat you to death with that. I don't. But what I do want to do is make sure that we understand and, and never excuse me, never forget that he did provide for us in those places. So, you know, think about it. Think about how many of you may have been strung out and you asked God for help and and he brought you here. Now, I say that because some of you are here and like in any other program, you're no different than any, any other addicts around or alcoholics. You tend to forget what God did for you. We tend to forget and take for granted that God put out more food tonight than I don't don't even, I can't even imagine. That looked like like something, something from, if we were paying for a banquet at Disney. I mean, we had lollipop cakes, we had, we had all kinds of, we had, we had baked beans and we needed to stretch the beans, so we put pork, shredded pork in it. I mean, I'm serious. 
That's crazy. I thought to myself, the first thing I thought to myself when James gave me a plate was, who puts shredded pork in pork and beans? You know, what happened to like two or three pieces of ham, uh, 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 bacon or something? And then I realized he needed to probably stretch the pork and beans. That's what I'm talking about. We sometimes forget about that stuff. Think about this. Think about maybe even some of you watching this video. And maybe you were looking around YouTube for, you know, Comedy Central or something or, you know, some, some other stupid thing on, on YouTube. And instead you, 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 you found us because God had you to find us. And God had you to hear this, this teaching on his promises. And, and that's really what I want to do tonight. I just want to encourage you all tonight to continue to, to look at God's promises. Because sometimes I think some of us believe that, that somehow we ourselves, you, made it happen and God had nothing to do with this. That you somehow talked your way in to, with the judge or, with a, or whoever and talked your way in here. <clears throat> or that for some reason we met you and, and we couldn't hold back because you had so many gifts that we needed to partake of in you being here. And you say, well, that's crazy, Pastor Joe. I didn't have nothing. I, I, know, I know we know that. But sometimes we come in here and we forget that we're coming in here with literally some of us nothing. Now, I'm not saying everybody, but even those of us that have stuff are still coming in here in a deficit. And, and that's what we forget at times. And, and, and when we look at this whole thing is and understand that, that we didn't make it happen, that God had made it happen. And if we look at the word, I want to look at the word wealthy. Simply speaking, the word wealthy means he provided for you. Not just money, not just a job, but everything he has provided for you. He has provided your clothes. He's provided your program. He's provided whatever transportation or mode of transportation you have. He's provided your health. He's restored your relationships. And God is providing for you all his promises that he promised to you. And not just to you. You say, well, he didn't promise me anything. Oh, yes, he did. I just read it in Deuteronomy, Old Testament. He promised it to your ancestors which means his word doesn't change, so that means he promised it to us. They needed shade, he gave them shade. He gave them clouds to keep them from frying in the desert. They needed heat at night, he gave them heat. They needed food, he gave them food. They needed water, he gave them water. Think about this. Some of you, Go in the programs, not just this one, but any program. And you go in there with absolutely nothing. You're destitute. Oh, you may have some clothes and you may have some things, but for the most part, you're destitute. You're busted. And God provides for you everything. And especially, I can't speak for other programs, but especially this program, God has provided for us immensely. I told you a month ago, two months ago, get prepared. I don't know what God's doing. All I know is he's bringing in a boatload of food. And along with that, he must have a reason. And here we are up to 60 people again. We are blessed. Not just we. I mean, look at America. Even, even our poorest people are better off than some of the middle class people in other countries. And we have got to understand that this word wealthy means that he's provided everything for us. And that's one of God's titles, God the provider. And understanding that he provides the clothes and the program and the transportation and our health and 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 restore relationships, and yes, sometimes we, we get bummed out, and, and yes, sometimes we get 
news that is not overly exciting to us, you know, certain rules and regulations, you know, that, that you may have to abide by because, you know, you're still under the under county county law and, and reigns and jurisdiction and stuff. See, that's what I'm getting at. You don't have to do nothing. God is going to provide. I don't know how. I don't know how, how he's going to figure it out or do it or the means of it. All I know is that God is going to provide. And I know that because for the last 38 years, not even my own, my own Christian walk, but just being, in this, being part of this ministry, he has provided for 38 years. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm trying to get you guys not to forget. And it's easy to forget. It's easy to start thinking you're doing it. It's, it's because of your work ethics is why you're getting raises and, and being made lead men on the jobs and, and, you know, bosses are sending you home with thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment on their trucks. And they know where you're at. And yet they do it. Why? Because God's providing a way for you. <laughs> because God is taking care of you. Because in reality, most of us, including myself, in our heyday when we were using, couldn't hold down a job. I'll be honest with you, I couldn't hold, I could barely hold down a job working for my father. I can't tell you how many times he, he took me aside. Like if, if I don't straighten up my act, I'm out of here. And I was working for him. And then I had to go to work in the real world. And then I really didn't know what to do. Because I found out that nobody cares about you in the real world. All they care about is if you produce. Now, I wasn't a Christian then, so I was working for the wrong guy, obviously. But what I'm getting at is, is that we're not doing it. What I'm getting at is, is that, that God promised our ancestors, from our ancestors to the present, his promise has been to us. And this is the promise in verse 19. But I assure you of this. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods, worshiping them and bowing down to them, you will certainly be destroyed. Now, you're saying to yourself right now, Pastor Joe, that doesn't sound very uh, uplifting. It's not, um, it's not making me feel very joyful. It should. Because if you read it right, here's what it's saying. It's saying that God won't destroy you. Not unless you tend to begin to worship these false idols. So, well, I've, I've never worshipped a false idol in my life. And I say, baloney. Baloney. <clears throat> Think about it. Alcohol. Drugs. Lust of all kinds, greed of all kinds, gambling, you name it. Those were our gods. We worship those gods. Let's take all the other ones off the table. Let's just talk about drugs and alcohol. Don't tell me you didn't worship the god of drugs. I'll tell you the truth. I know plenty of, well, they're not around now because, but I've known, I knew plenty of people who worshiped the God of fentanyl or opioids so much that they sacrificed themselves on that, on that altar. So, oh, what are you talking about, man? I'm talking about they died. That's what I'm talking about. They worshiped that idol so much. I know on my own, on, for my, my own self, I worship money. And I worship jewelry. Those, those were my gods. Everything I did was so that I could make more money, so that the more money I made, the more jewelry I, I bought, 
the more jewelry I bought, the more women I attracted because I thought I had money. I skunked them. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? And it goes on and on and on and on, and we've all done the same exact thing. <clears throat> and and, and this, this whole teaching is about promises, what God has promised to us. It's about, it's about how God will send his people and he'll equip us to succeed. He sent you, okay, maybe he didn't send me to you, but he sent you to me. Fresh start, not me personally, but fresh start. Now you say, well, that's, you know, no, the judge sent me. No, no, the judge had nothing to do with it. Trust me on this one. Because there's a lot of people here that the judge already said you're going to fresh start. And we said, oh, no, he's not. And they're not here because we didn't think they were, they were a good fit. We didn't think they were for real. But here yet, here all you are, all 60 of you, or however many, 59, 60, whatever it is, 61, I don't even know anymore. Everyone say, I'm thankful for the promises God has spoken over my life. I'm thankful for the promises God has spoken over my life. Seriously, whatever God speaks, he intends to accomplish. Nothing's going to stop it. Think about that. Think about that. Nothing's going to stop it. The only thing that can stop it or the only person that can stop it is basically you. And even at that, you, gotta, you, got, you don't even have a clue. Many of you think you've stopped it, but you haven't stopped it. Many of you might have thought you stopped it one time, two times, three times, because that's how many times you've been in a program and you've stopped it every time, and yet you're back in another program. No, you didn't stop nothing. God's still moving and grooving. He promised he was going to help you. You asked for help. He promised he was going to help you. You're going to get that help whether you want it or not. <clears throat> now, you can run from it. You can hide from it. You can do whatever you want from God. But the bottom line is, think about this. What rock are you going to hide under to hide from the Holy Spirit. You tell me, you show me that rock, I want to see it. Because I don't think there's a rock that we can hide in. There's not a corner, a dark corner in this world that we can hide behind or hide under to hide from God. And really what it comes down to is he promised he was going to do it. We asked him for that promise. He said, okay. Even though we reneged, he's still going to stick to his promise. I know that my grandmother, God bless her, used to pray for me every day. Monday through Sunday, two hours a day, she went up in her room and she prayed. She not only just for me for two hours, I mean, that I'm sure I kept her busy plenty of time. But for, for the whole family, and she prayed for all of us. You know what she used to pray for me, she told me, before I became a pastor? That I would become a priest. You've got to understand, we were brought up in a Catholic, Catholic religion. She wanted me to become a priest. And when I became a pastor, I said, Graham, I didn't become a priest, but I'm darn close. She said, yes, you are, Joseph. And then she passed away just a few weeks after that. She passed away happy, man. She got, she got her prayers answered. I straightened my act out. My brother straightened his act out. My dad no longer thought he was invincible and realized by going to prison that he couldn't do this and he became a Christian and my mother became a Christian. My Roman Catholic grandmother became a Christian. My brother served the Lord till the day he passed away. My father served the Lord until the day he passed away. My mother served the Lord and loved the Lord until the day she passed away. I intend on serving God until the day I pass away. My kids are Christians because of that. My grandkids are Christians because of that. And God only knows how many people that have had seeds planted simply by coming to Fresh Start, whether it's for one day or one year. I talked to a guy that came through Fresh Start. He did finish the program. I saw him. 
I said, hey, man, how you doing? He says, Pastor Jerry, he says, I'm doing fabulous. I came up here and, and felt like God wanted me to minister to my family. And I got back in the family business. And I literally, we can't keep enough workers to cover, to, to fix all the roofs that God is producing for us to fix. We're making so much money, it's ridiculous. Now, it's not all about money, don't get me wrong, but God wants us, he doesn't want us poverty level necessarily. Oh, you may have to start out that way. You may have to do things you didn't want to do, but the bottom line is if you keep trudging along and you keep doing what he, you're supposed to do, he's going to do what he's supposed to do. And I guess that's what I'm getting at. And one of the things he says he's going to do is he's going to heal you from this thing called addiction. Or at least get it, get it, get it arrested. But unfortunately, we get bummed out because it doesn't happen fast enough for us. And I think that's what I'm getting at here is, is that, that he, if he speaks it, he intends, it he, te he intends to accomplish it. And again, like I said, nothing's going to stop it. Let me give you an example of that. King David said, now you know who King David is? Psalms, King David, man after God's own heart, that King David. King David that slew the giant, that King David. King David said, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I thought about that this week. I thought about what does that actually mean? I mean, I, I understand it sounds good. It's poetic. And especially if you, if you read it in the New King James, I mean, the King James, it's really poetic. And, and it's, it's great. But what does it really mean? What does it, what does, what does it actually mean that he's going to give me, if, if I delight myself in the Lord, He'll give me the desires of my heart. I think what it means is sometimes God's got to show us that not everything we want is something he promised. That's number one. Because sometimes you have desires of your heart and we don't get them. And you know why we don't get them? Because they're not what God promised us. <clears throat> I remember way back when, when I first started out, I got, I got kind of bummed out because uh, Fresh Start couldn't pay me a salary. I mean, I was doing this thing pro bono or just getting everything started, and I wasn't making any money. Kelly was barely making any money. <clears throat> we had guys in the program living with us in our house with my kids. And I got bummed out, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to go get a job. So I made a few inquiries. I got, I got some people to uh, put in a good word for me anyway. I'm not going to go into that whole story. But I would have had the best job that I would have ever had in my entire lifetime. Walking around, as I've told you many times, with a white coat with my name on it, in the hospital, going and visiting people who got, who got in their labs, had, had drugs or alcohol in their system telling them all about programs and stuff with my little, with my little you know, checklist and okay, but beep, beep, beep. And I, go, and I was going to make a ton of money doing that. And I thought, man, that's what I got to, I, I, this is what God, this, had to, this has to be his, it's got to be his promise, right? <clears throat> and again, I don't want to get into the whole story. Let's just say in the 11th hour, God had me to bail. Said, I didn't, I didn't promise you this. What are you doing, man? I didn't promise you this. What are you doing? I said, I'm, 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 you promised you were going to take care of me, God. He said, yeah, I am going to take care of you, and I have been taking care of you. You want anything? I said, nope. He said, electric bill paid? Yep. You got a decent house? Yeah, I mean, I'm sharing it with, you know, 10 or 15 other people, but, I mean, other than that, yeah, I got a nice house. You know, we got a nice house, fresh start. He says, you got food on the table? Yep, got food on the table. He says, kids didn't want for anything? I said, man, not really. So what's the problem? I said, that's a good question. And he said, right, so stay right where you're at. And I stayed. 
People ask me all the time, what do you think would have happened if you would have left, Pastor Joe? I have no idea. All I know is I wouldn't probably be here tonight teaching you this lesson. Maybe somebody else would, I don't know, or maybe there would be no fresh start. I don't know. All I know is that delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart is that God is going to give us what he has promised us, not every whim that we want. But what happens is, is because God doesn't give us what we desire all the time, and because we understand, we, well, we don't even understand it, but we, we, we we're going to understand it after tonight, that it's not necessarily one of his promises to us, and then we lose confidence in God because that's what we do. We get, we confuse our wants with his promises. See, just because you want something doesn't mean he promised it to you. And that's going to be the hardest, one of the hardest lessons you learn. How many of you are, I'm going to ask you this question, and I'm, I'm going to ask for a show of hands. How many of you are confident in God's promise? Okay. Okay, so now that you've all raised your hands, well, most of you, uh, a little, little full disclosure. I guess I should have said this first, but I'm basically setting you up for the knockout punch. Confidence in God's promise without commitment to his process is not dependence, it's delusion. Think about that. Say, well, what does that mean, Pastor Joe? I'm glad you asked me. I'm going to explain it to you. And I'm going to explain it to you because I want this thing to ring in your ears. Ring in your ears the next time you think, well, why didn't God do this or why didn't God do that? Why didn't he answer this prayer or answer that prayer? It's because you haven't made a commitment. It's because you are not fully committed. It's because you, you ask God to send you the fresh start, but you don't want to do what it's going to take to receive the promise that he has given you. You don't want to do the hard work. You want God to do all the work. You want to just sit back on your laurels and just soak up all the promises. Just, just keep them coming, Lord. Keep them coming. <clears throat> and that's delusional. <coughs> Moses in Deuteronomy is, is really what he's doing in Deuteronomy. He's, he's, he's reliving some of his own regrets, I think, <coughs> or I believe. And, and yet, yeah, he's, 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 I think he's doing more than just reminding the people not only but what God did but, or, or what he did, but he's reminding the people that they, that they disobeyed. They complained they had no food. He sent manna. Then they complained all they had was manna. Be careful that you, he brings into this land, doesn't think you are the reason you're there. What does that mean? Well, let me put it in words you can understand. Don't get the big head. Why? Because he wants to make sure that he that brought me into this land to do this work doesn't think I'm the person that did this. See, you who he brought into recovery, you who had nothing to do with it, you who had no say, you, you who happened to, to be maybe someplace and, and you know, Sometimes I kid around with people in the, in the, in the, in the intake say, okay, so what would you do? Take the list of people, put it on the thing, and throw something at it, and, and our name, it stuck on our name, and that's why we got called? Well, no. I called three or four other programs, and nobody answered the phone except you guys. Oh, so you did that. No, God did that. God did that. I didn't do it. You didn't do it. God did it. He brought you here. He brought you here why? I don't know. Some of you, I got a pretty good idea why. 
Some of you, I got no clue why I brought you here as far as why, why here, why us, why, why this team. But the one thing he wants to do is he wants to keep you from becoming arrogant and prideful. Because the minute you forget, you lose the war. And it's not because God's not great. That's not why you lose the war. You lose the war because you forgot how to fight the fight. You forgot how to fight the battle. You started thinking it was all about you and not about God. And that's why. So... How'd that work out for you? But here's the question for everybody. <clears throat> the question is, do you believe that God promised you peace? I'm not asking for an answer. So if you believe God promised you peace, so how are you going to get it? See, that's the real question. How are you going to get it? The real question was not the fact that God told the people he's going to bring them into the promised land. The real question was, how are they going to get it? See, they had no idea. They had no idea that they were going to travel for 40 years in a desert, and it should have only taken them four days tops or whatever it is. And yet they're 40 years walking around in circles like idiots. These are not stupid people. These are people that lived in the desert. They know the desert. They know everything. And yet they're walking around like morons. Not because God didn't want to give it to them, but because God had to work out some stuff in them. Oh, that means God may need to work out some stuff in us here at Fresh Start? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Which is why I'm in some of y'all's lives. Or at least my team is. Not me necessarily, because I, you know, I just do this thing and but my team, the counselors, because they're going to speak dead on into your life, man, about stuff. They're going to not shy away from stuff they see. They're going to tell you what they see. They're going to tell you what they think God is telling them to tell you. So the real question is, is, is how do I get that? How do I get this, this, this promise? How do I get this peace? What I did find in Philippians 4, 6, and 7 is probably how we do get peace. Listen up. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, I imagine that most of you like the part about the peace. That's pretty cool, the peace part. Yeah, man, peace. You know? Let's have peace. Let's just chill, man. You know? But maybe you didn't like the first part. You know, the part about praying. The part about being thankful or asking God for stuff. See, we're, we're funny that way. We don't like to do that. We want the peace. We want the serenity. We want the joy, but we don't want to ask him for it. We don't want to pray about it. We don't have to want to keep asking him for it. But you see, you can't skip any steps because it's a formula. A formula, there's no shortcuts. So there it is. The promise, the peace, the process. Not sitting around thinking about everything that could have or, or would or did go wrong in our lives or might go wrong in our lives or went wrong 20 years ago in our lives. That's not going to get us anywhere. You can't cancel out a bad thought life with a good prayer life and get peace. It doesn't work that way. You can't keep dwelling on the garbage and then pray, and then go dwell in the garbage again. See, we've got to want to do, we've got to do more than really, really, really want it. But I really, really, really want peace. Yeah, me too. And I've been working at it for the last 38 years. 
And it's taken me 38 years. It's taken me 38 years to be happy in my marriage. Not that I wasn't happy to begin with, but I'm happier now than I've ever been. You know why? Because my wife is no longer just a partner. She's my friend. She has truly been my friend. She's the person I want to grow old with. She's the person I want to see before I close my eyes and go home to the Lord. And my kids. Three kids love me to, I'm going to speak for them, but love me to death. Two grandkids that unless I'm disciplining them, love me. Especially when I'm giving them stuff. No, seriously, they, 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 they love me. They, my kids love me. My, my, my daughter-in-law, I would say not as, as much as her father, but I think she, she loves me and cares about me. You know, my son-in-law loves and cares about me. People, in the 40-something years I've been a Christian that I've met, there are people that love and care about me still to this day that I haven't talked to in, 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 long, in a long time, but they still, they still think about me. I still think about them. <clears throat> but you're going to have to commit. You can't keep sitting on the fence, people, and this is the message tonight. You can't keep sitting on the fence. You can't, you're going to have to go one way or the other. You can't keep sitting on the fence. You're going to have to commit. Either you commit and give it all to God and start asking him for the things that, that he wants to give you and the promises, or you don't. See, now to me, it's an easy, it's an easy process. Why would I want to go back to not serving the Lord and go back to my old ways when my old ways were nothing but me basically starving to death? You got to commit to God. You got to commit to your recovery. You can't be half, half striding this thing. You can't be putting only half an effort into it. Recovery and, and Christianity is easy. It's easy in the fact that all God is requiring of you is commitment. Not even to be committed and, and perfect. Just commit. God, please help me. Please teach me how to, how to get rid of this craving for these drugs. Show me who I'm supposed to be hanging around with, who I'm not supposed to be hanging around with. Where should I make new friends? Should I go get this job or that job? Where would you want me to be, Father? Not where the money is necessarily, but where do you want me to be? How many guys have taken a job, and I'm not, I'm not looking for a show of hands because maybe nobody in here tonight, but how many people in, in Fresh Starts history, and my staff knows this, be, guys have gotten jobs, and they've started out with, on minimum wage. And now they're, 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 they're lead men and managers and supervisors in all kinds of companies around here. And they started out minimum wage. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm a, I'm a qualified electrician. Yeah, but you ain't got no tools, man. You hocked them all. Well, yeah, but I'm qualified. Yeah, but you hocked them all. Get on the truck, pull wire for right now, and you'll have your turn. And they get their turn. Just met a dude. Started his own company, man. That's how he started, making peanuts, digging ditches for them. Sent him to school. No, not him. Sent him to school, got his own company, worked for a while under somebody else. Now he just showed up the other day. I said, hey, man, how's it going? He says, great. I said, what are you doing? He says, I got my own company. I said, holy smokes. And that hadn't been that long. Think about it. That's what God wants to do. Now, is everybody going to be that way? No. Some of you are going to have to go the hard road. But I'm here to tell you the best way to go is with God's way. It may be a harder road, but it's going to be, in the long run, it's going to be a more profitable road. Think about it. Let's pray. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you and praise you. Father, for those of us who have not made a commitment yet, to you tonight, not to you, nor a recovery, a full commitment. 
Help us, Lord, to, to commit. Help us, Lord, first to commit to you, and then secondly, Lord, to commit to our recovery, to do whatever it takes not to use again, to do whatever it takes, Father, not to put that bottle or that drug, that pill, whatever it is, that joint up on that, that altar again and, and worship it as an idol. Help us, Father, to, to worship only, only one God. That's God Almighty and Jesus, his Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We hope this teaching has provided valuable insight into addressing addiction, whether it's something you're facing personally or it's affecting a family member or a friend. And remember, gaining a deeper understanding through these teachings is a crucial first step towards lasting change. Please hit the YouTube subscribe button so you'll be notified every time there's a new video posted. At Fresh Start, we're committed to helping individuals and families find healing and freedom from addiction. And if you found this helpful, please consider supporting our work. You can easily make a difference by visiting our website at freshstartministries.com and clicking the donate button. Even if it's just $10 a month, every cent helps us continue our mission. Be sure to visit our website to also find our bi-monthly newsletters. We'll be sharing updates, success stories, and additional resources in our blogs to support you on your journey. Thank you again for being part of the Fresh Start community. And we look forward to seeing you soon in our future sessions.